I was working when this guy, let's call him John, came up to me. First asking some questions about these famous protein shakes and then telling me that a friend of him just started lifting and now thinks that he needs to drink 5 protein shakes a day. John finds this really amusing because he is so more experienced than his friend and drinks just one protein shake a day. Laughing out on the inside while staying serious on the outside, I ask him some questions. Questions about the food he eats next to his daily shake intake and how many scoops he actually puts in there. He responds with 4 to 5 scoops. 4 to 5 scoops? 4 to 5 scoops. And at this moment I just realized that there's a big lack in understanding what this famous protein actually is and how it can help you build muscle mass. I know that some of you want to live the life in the fast lane, so I'll cover the key points for you in this 30 seconds overview. Studies showed that for best results considering muscle growth, your body only needs 1.4 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. While dieting you need up to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight to prevent muscle loss. Calories are more important when building muscle and losing body fat than protein. There are negative effects of a protein focused diet, but they're mainly not because of the protein, but of other factors coming along with such diet form, like a possible lack of micronutrients. For those of you having more time, let's focus on the mysterious protein itself. This is a perfectly drawn tuna sandwich, including the nutrition facts. This tuna sandwich actually consists of different components. One of them, protein, starts getting digested in your stomach. Following the digestive tract, the protein, at first three-dimensional, gets cut down into its key components, the amino acids. There are 20 standard amino acids, 9 of them are essential, meaning your body can produce them. Therefore, protein itself is an essential component in your diet. The amino acids are like Lego bricks to your body. With the information of your DNA, your body can construct self-made proteins again. Why should you care? Because the smallest part of your muscle, the myofibrils, consists of protein. So to repair the small damages in your myofibrils due to weightlifting, your body needs protein. Also to increase the length of the myofibril or create new ones, which leads to visible muscle growth. So this is basically one of three reasons gym goers tend to have a really, really, really high protein intake. Because they want to build muscle mass. But studies actually showed that 1.3 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight are delivering the best results in muscle growth. Let's go back to John. John wants to build on 1 kilogram of muscle in one month. The smart version of John tries to calculate how much protein and calories he actually needs. Just the material costs are 1500 calories, meaning the protein, fat and glycogen to build the muscle. The muscle building process also needs energy. One gram of muscle mass needs about 5 to 8 calories. Therefore in this case 6000 calories. Let's say John trains 3 times a week for over an hour. This results to about half an hour of raw weightlifting, costing your body 300 calories. For one month this turns to 3600 calories extra. And how much extra protein do we need? Let's just say that 1 kilogram of muscle mass only consists 20% of protein. More than 70% of it is water. Therefore about 200 extra grams of protein. Calculating this information down to one day, John needs 370 extra calories and 7 grams of extra protein. As you can see, your daily caloric intake is way more important. The second reason is the fear of losing your hard earned muscles. Let's just say that there was a study of marathon runners showing that they only used 20 grams of protein to provide energy. And this actually completely makes sense. Your body doesn't want to use protein as an energy source. It's like buying a wooden table, sawing it into pieces, building a better table suited for your needs just to destroy it again to make a fire because you're cold. As you can see it's a total waste of energy. But when you're on a diet and other energy sources are raw, high protein intake is justified and should be raised to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day to prevent unnecessary protein fires in your body. And probably the best reason is the effect on your overall appearance. You may notice that a high protein intake makes you look more shredded, more muscular and just more appealing. This is because of three reasons. One of it is the muscle growth, 
And there we saw that protein only plays a limited factor, so we better move on. May sound difficult, and I can tell you, it actually is. The dietary induced thermogenesis, as it is called, means your body's use of energy to process food for use and storage. The thermogenesis only consists of 10% of your daily calorie need. So even though protein does have the highest effect on thermogenesis on a dietary level, it is unlikely that it will play a role in your overall calories. But why are high protein diets otherwise so effective in weight loss? It's merely because of the increased satiety. You may notice that whenever you eat raw chicken or kidney beans that you feel full. Therefore protein can reduce your appetite, which can lead to weight loss. You can even use this factor by drinking a protein shake after still feeling hungry after a meal. But the better way to reduce appetite is by constructing a diet around these three factors. So make sure you have food in your diet consisting of protein, fiber and high amounts of water. An example for a food with a high amount of water is this perfectly drawn watermelon. While you should still not lose sight on protein even while focusing on an increased satiety diet, here's why. Low carb, high protein, high fat diets increase the risk of heart diseases. But the negative effects on a high protein diet isn't, as studies showed, because of the protein but because of the different factors coming along with it. There may be a risk factor for your kidney, but if you're lucky enough to possess a healthy kidney and drink enough water, you don't need to worry. So the real problem with high protein diets are that they are usually high in saturated fat. Saturated fats raise your LDL cholesterol level which may lead to arteriosclerosis and coronary heart diseases. Saturated fat is usually found in junk food, fried food and, oh no, ice cream. Another risk factor is dietary cholesterol, found in eggs, which may lead to the same diseases. But studies also have shown that the healthy effect of exercise can outweigh this negative factor. Meaning if you're a bodybuilder, training intense, yet enjoying some eggs, you don't need to worry. But don't forget that this effect is no longer present when hopping on a juicy juice ride, aka using steroids. Another factor I remember back when I started, I was going on this crazy meat and rice diet. It is the lack of micronutrients. This can lead to different symptoms like reduced immune function, eye disease, artery disease whatsoever. If you eat a healthy, balanced diet with enough fruits and vegetables, you don't have to worry. But probably you should worry about this. Whey powder, using more than 100 grams of it a day, like my friend Sean, gets expensive pretty fast. So remember my friend, don't get broke trying to look sexy.